Hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we're sort of getting settled in to this sort of whole thing that we're doing here. We just kind of wandered around town for a bit and we got ready for our first true Tartarus expedition. We're sort of moving past the tutorials finally. We're on episode like 7 now and we're finally sort of getting past the tutorials. This is for real. We're going into Tartarus and then the... Uh, Real-life social element is something we'll probably get into in episodes 8 or 9. So, without further ado, let's jump right into Tartarus. Oh, that reminds me. Let's discuss our first goal for this exploration. According to our research, Tartarus is divided into several different regions. If we continue to climb the tower, then we'll eventually reach a spot that leads to a new area. Reaching that spot should be our first goal. Are you all ready? I'm ready. Remember, don't push yourself too hard. You can always use the teleporters to return. You can always go back to the highest floor you've reached that day. Ah, yes. Here, take this. If you ever find yourself in danger, don't hesitate to use them. That's all from my end. Good luck. Leader. Each floor's dimensions may vary, but don't feel compelled to explore every inch of each new layout. Rushing directly for the stairs is a completely viable strategy. I leave that choice to your discretion. So yeah, it teaches us how to run. Sure thing, Takaba. So... Uh, the way Tartarus works is... It's a bunch of... It's a bunch of... Layouts that are sort of randomly generated. And you're moving through all of them. And you're just trying to get as close to the top as you possibly can. Every, like, 20-ish floors, there's a border floor, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's the floor that's like, hey, stop here, you can't go any further. And so, my goal whenever I play through this game is always to get to the border floor as fast as possible, get to, like, a, a decent level in terms of experience, and then uh, be completely done with Tartarus for the rest of the month. Because it, it kind of sucks if you use your, like, free time during the night to go to Tartarus multiple times. Because you're wasting time that you could, could be using to do uh, social stats or other things that we'll get to later. So that's just my strategy, and it's a lot of people's strategies when it comes to this game. So one thing that you've probably noticed is that when you get a back attack on these enemies the music changes when you get just like a normal encounter with an enemy or they back attack you you get uh, mass destruction a remix of mass destruction which I'll get into the soundtrack in just a bit but the if you get a back attack on them you get the song I believe it's called it's going down which is an incredible song I love both of the battle tracks for this game uh, Something that is sort of talked about among fans of this game is the OST, the soundtrack. Because since it's a remake, of course it has... You're likely to find a plethora of these strange mineral deposits scattered throughout Tartarus. Supposedly these are the formations of the crystallized remains of shadows. There are sure to be useful materials inside them. When you find one, try cracking it open. So yeah, that's that weird orange hand-looking thing that I've been breaking. Just press uh, square to go ahead and break it open. So yeah, since it's a remake, obviously they redid a lot of the songs, and when the OST was first like revealed to the public, and people got to and people got to listen to the songs at first, it was oh that shadow just disappeared, I guess. A lot of people were freaked out because it sounded like quite a few of the songs were sort of butchered in a way. And going into this now, I actually do like a lot of the songs on the Reload soundtrack. There are some songs that I do think the original does better, like Mass Destruction, the current the battle theme that's playing right now. I just like the original version more. It sounds more... It sounds like it has a lot more oomph behind it. Not to say that this 
version is any worse or anything like that. I still think this version this version is pretty good. Also, I want to give compliments to the singer who like is she is absolutely incredible in these songs, especially in the original song like uh like what's what's the name of that song? Uh you know the one that was used at the end of like all of the trailers and stuff like that as well as it's going down now the previously mentioned uh, extra battle theme I'll continue exploring this floor for a little bit I always like to try to explore every nook and cranny and then once I start getting low on SP that's when I start getting real like when I start trying to avoid enemies more and more and rushing through SP items are sort of a come on Junpei SP items are sort of a rarity when it comes to these games, so be sure to try to get a, a good chunk of them and not to waste too many. One pretty big change to Persona 3 when it comes to this remake is Tartarus itself, because, you know, in the original Persona 3 it was just kind of like an unending maze labyrinth that just continued on and on for, uh, f for pretty much ever until you got to the end. And that was one of the biggest things that I disliked about the original Persona 3, because I loved, like, pretty much everything, every other part of it. But when it comes to the main gameplay sections, when actually going through Tartarus, it was just a huge slog. Which, thankfully, this version of the game made a lot more... The gameplay was a lot more addicting in reload rather than the original game especially because the original game's combat was fairly slow also the layout of tartarus is a lot less like a never-ending set of hallways and more of just an open area with cool visuals and stuff like that so it's easy to sort of get lost in here and then like an hour passes and it hasn't even felt like that once I started getting closer to the end of the game, then the effect sort of stopped wearing, like, wore off on me. But I still had a pretty enjoyable time going through Tartarus in the remake here. Another thing that's different with the remake compared to the original is that the translations of Japanese games have slowly gotten less and less Americanized, I guess is the only term I can come up with, where with Persona 1 especially, it's very infamous how that game got, like, absolutely butchered. And when it got brought over to the West. And slowly, as we've gone on, they've let the localizations become more and more uh, Japanese. Because, you know, it was thought back in the day that, like, oh, Americans wouldn't like Japanese media, I guess, because it's not relatable to them. But no, people love anime and stuff like that, so thankfully we've got more direct translations. I mean, it's obviously not one for one, for one, but, you know, it's still gotten a lot better. My point is that I'm trying to get to here is that sometimes, is that in the original Persona 3, people were referred to by their first names. Yukari, you know, we just call her Yukari. Uh, Sonata, we, we call them Akihiko. And as we get into the social links, you'll see that a lot of them in this version of the game are referred to by their last name, whereas in the original, they were referred to by their first name. And so I've kind of had a mini dilemma as to how I should refer to them. And so I've come to the conclusion that I should d just do what the protagonist's inner narration says their name is. So like, for example, the narration of the main character is, refers to Sonata as Sonata instead of Akihiko. So I'll refer to him as Sonata. I might slip up though, but as long as you know who I'm who I'm talking about, it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. And I might make some exceptions, like I previously joked about how uh, Takaba said, "Call me Takaba," and then the, the protagonist was immediately like, "Oh yeah, that's Yukari." So I'll call her Takeba until maybe a bit later in the story. When the protagonist and Yukari become a bit closer, maybe I'll start referring to her as Yukari. Did I refer to her as Yukari in that sentence? Gosh dang it. Oh, here's our first mini-boss. 
Judging from the frequency of the signal, this is undoubtedly a stronger foe. It would be a wise decision to regroup before approaching. That's... Hmm, that device there. We may be able to use it. Do check it out. So yeah, this is another teleporter, but it's not like the one-way teleporters. Hmm, I see. Go ahead and select the first floor on that device. It should bring you back. With this, we can actually go in between floors. So... I knew it. Those devices are teleporters. They're portals that are all connected to one another. Once activated, you should be able to travel between any of the other devices. Be sure to activate any you come across. They'll be quite useful during future expeditions. One strategy that I used in the original game, and you could still use, is to just rush to the boss floor and get to the point where you can use the teleporter to go in between floors, and then go back down, start grinding for XP, and then when you're confident enough to face the boss, go ahead and do that. I want to check something for Junpei, because he should be... close to something. How's your persona? Oh! You actually have, a uh, Augie there. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and save here. Because if I die to this boss fight, I actually haven't saved since I started the LP all of the previous episodes I've done in one recording session. So let's save my game. Salut. Now, without further ado, uh, let's go back to floor 5 and face off up against our first sort of boss fight. It's enemy territory up ahead. Are you ready for battle? Let's go. All right, let's go. Move out, squad. Keep your eyes on me. This is beyond the level of an ordinary shadow. Watch yourselves. This is the Ruthless Ice Raven. Uh, these guys are weak to fire, so use Orpheus from Yuki and... Use uh, Junpei's Augie skills as well to go ahead and set them on fire, knock them both down, and use an all-out attack. Hey, uh, sometimes you'll hit an enemy so hard that they will not be able to get up, which is awesome. Yeah, both of them are down once again. This might actually mess up the fact that that one Ice Raven couldn't get up. Actually, never mind. Ah, oh, Mabufu. Okay, that's an ice move that attacks everyone. I'm gonna... Okay, I can use Dia. Can I heal Yuki or Takeba? No, I'll go for Yuki. Thanks. Got the full heal for him. And he can use Augie to hopefully kill this last raven. Very nice. And all out attack might defeat that last one. Yeah, there we go. Alright, you won. Great work out there. We got Patra for Takeba. And that cures a lot of different ailments, so that's really good to have. Nicely done. Everyone, that was a formidable opponent. Heh, <laughs> okay, my stunning performance aside, aren't we aren't all of us totally on the same wavelength now? Let's not bring up your stunning performance ever. And I'd rather not be on the same wavelength as you either. What? why not? Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Jeez. Well, I guess you have a point. Let's keep up the good work, Yuki-kun. We're doing good work for a new team. Let's keep up the pace. Right now, Tartarus is our only lead to unravel the mystery behind the Dark Hour. Alrighty, then let's keep on moving. Keep on moving indeed. Every boss- totally weak, but they still don't stand a chance against me. Every boss floor also has an aside here that gives you an item or two. You can get anything from healing items, to SP items, to weapons, to armor, anything. Uh, I always suggest um, going back to the lobby and saving after beating a boss fight. During my original playthrough, this, 
playthrough of this game, I saved constantly. Like, every time I made a decision, I saved because I was always afraid of losing progress. So I just did that constantly, and I'd highly suggest you yourself making a habit out of saving. How's work? It would seem that your enemies grow stronger with every floor. Despite the imminent danger, it stands to reason that we've gained valuable experience. Let's continue on. All right, let's go. Hey, there's a treasure chest. So you kind of see the uh, gameplay loop here. Rancid gravy. No, that's a different thing. I was like, isn't that used for a, a quest that we're about to do? But no, don't worry. There's a shadow up ahead. I'll take the opportunity to teach you about shifting. Okay, here's a, here's something let's that was, that is super useful. Get ready, here it comes. I'll provide you with support as well. All right. Let me tell you about a new tactic called shifting. When you knock an enemy down, shifting allows you to leverage that opening to let someone else take action. Once you do, your offense can follow up with whoever you passed your action to. If you can coordinate well with your team, you'll be able to claim victory with even greater efficiency. You should all be experienced enough to pull this off now. Go ahead and give it a try. Alrighty, shift. Uh, this is a reworking of a move from Persona 5 called Baton Pass. Uh, where basically... Once you knock an enemy down, you can make it someone else's turn. This is great because you can quickly take care of a group of enemies by shifting from one person who has the ability to knock down an enemy to another one. And it's also great for SP conservation because, let's say there's a, an enemy that's weak to fire, I could use a fire attack from Yuki and then shift over to Junpei and both of them will have lost a tiny bit of SP whereas one of them might have lost like a well solid chunk of SP. Yes. I see, so basically we're working together to battle more effectively. In combat you should be as coordinated as possible put it to good use. Uh, we will be putting it to good use. We will be using that constantly throughout the course of the game. It is such a great move. Tartarus episodes might be a little bit longer than your typical episode because we just have more stuff to cover and I don't want to spend like five episodes in a- Come on. I don't want to spend five episodes in a row just doing Tartarus stuff. So yeah, either the Tartarus videos will be heavily edited or they'll be a good bit longer than your typical episode. Oh, Major Arcana cards. Uh, basically, these have different effects. Um, you can only acquire one of each type per day, and if you gather enough to make an Arcana Burst, which in the bottom left corner it shows how many cards you need to have an Arcana Burst, uh, some really good stuff happens, which I'll show you in a little bit. I think this is the only Persona game to have different uh, physical stuff. We have Slash Attacks, we have Pierce Attacks, and then I forget what the one with the fist is called. Can I see your Persona? A uh, Strike! Okay. In other games, it's just a physical attack. Oh, uh, these guys, these hands. Hands are for some reason a reoccurring thing in Persona enemy design. Oh. Arcana Burst. What this does is it increases the ranks of these different uh, types of cards. So for example, we can click this and we get uh, level 2 XP. Doing pretty well. Still not too much because we're pretty early in the game so they don't give us as much XP. Anyways, tactics. So you have these various different tactics, act freely, full assault, conserve SP, heal support, and direct commands. Now your party is put automatically on direct commands. But the thing is, in the original Persona 3, and direct commands just means you, like, choose what attacks that they do, just like normal gameplay, but that didn't exist in the original Persona 3 or Persona 3 Fess. You just had to leave it up to the various other tactics to try to manipulate the AI into doing what you want to do. 
Um, it's very interesting, and while I prefer the more direct stuff that the entire rest of the Persona franchise does, there was like some sort of cool element to it where it's like it's closer to like closer to like real life, I guess. Even though realism is not something that the Persona series is going for, but there was this kind of like cool thing where it's like you're cheering on your teammates and you're like, oh yeah, you did exactly what I wanted you to, and. Well, they do something cool, it's awesome. But that also leads to the AI messing up sometimes and doing something completely awful, and so I prefer the more direct approach. So in Persona 3 Portable, they went back to having normal normal direct controls, and then they did that for Persona 3 Reload as well. So I think a good place to end off would be uh, the next, like once we get to the next floor with the next boss, because we have been kind of going on long. I think I'll start avoiding enemies now, and then if I want to, I'll, I'll like XP grind off camera. Although I don't think I'll need to, because this game isn't the hardest game in the world. So one thing that I kind of hesitate hesitate talking about when it comes to doing LPs is what I'm going to be doing for other Let's Plays, because it always feels like if I always have this anxiety that if I talk about what I'm doing for other LPs and stuff like that, that I'll be kind of like leaving people out. They'll just be like, oh, he spends the entirety of this LP talking about what he's going to be doing for the next LP. But this is sort of like a stream of consciousness thing that I'm doing right now, because we're going to be doing a lot of wandering around in Tartarus. Even if there were, why on earth would I buy a drink in a shady place like this? So, starting with the next episode, there's trouble waiting up one floor. It's the shadow we faced. It's like the shadow we faced on the fifth floor. So, starting with the next episode, I'll start making references to what I want to do in later episodes. Who's been setting up treasure chests here? I don't know, but it's probably not the shadow. That actually is a good question, and something that I wondered myself. Who set up, like, the teleporters and the chests and all this other stuff? So yeah, I assume that if you're watching this, you'll probably be using this as, like, background noise for when you're doing something else. Because that's kind of, like, the best thing to do when watching someone else play an RPG, is just do something while they're grinding or going through a dungeon or something like that. So I think it should be okay if I just discuss what other LPs I'm going to be doing. Anyways, I was kind of stalling for time and reiterating some points there. So this is gonna be it for... These gatekeepers, we'll call them, aren't going to simply let you pass. You'll need to be prepared for a real fight. Ensure that you are ready before engaging in a gatekeeper and make use of the teleporters if needed. Absolutely I will. This is going to kind of be the end of this episode, so yeah. Thank you guys almost all so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're gonna get, we're gonna continue on through Tartarus and hopefully reach the next border floor. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Boy.